So from my point of view, I was involved in this supporting this work in the community before I ever got on the school board. And actually the meeting that I was sworn in at was the meeting that we approved an evidence-based program that was gonna be implemented for all of our seventh graders. And I was delighted because it was a program that I was familiar with. And I learned at that time about the process that our SHAC, our School Health Advisory Committee, went through to recommend this particular program for our kids. And HISD has a history, I think, of being fairly progressive in the sexual health or sex ed classes that we provide for our kids. And I think it's because we have a structure in place that supports it. We have a population that's fairly at risk for teenage pregnancy and other um, early sexual activity. And so the board has always set a priority that our kids get information, whether or not it's just about pure sex ed or abuse prevention. And the, the shack does the work of vetting the programs and making sure that they're informed about what's current and then recommending those things to the board. I think they prioritize what's going to be important for our kids to have access to and the people running the group know that that's important. I think it's, the shack is an interesting dynamic because they also, they focus on all aspects of childhood health and I think there's sometimes a risk for it to veer to physical activity or nutrition because those things are easier to talk about and address, but we specifically have members of our shack that we know are going to encourage the dialogue to include all the components, including sexual health. and. <clears throat> I just think they know that our kids need this and the woman who runs our shack that is employed by the district has also been a PE and health teacher in our schools, has worked with kids and I think she herself facilitates that priority and making sure that HISD is giving our schools information they can disseminate to kids that's actually effective rather than misinformation because we know that our kids are at risk for getting pregnant or, or the other things that come along with early sexual initiation. I would say that on the shack there's parents who have the concern of ensuring our kids have good information. There are community members, there are people that have worked in the sexual health community that are represented and, and I would say that that is a function of the leadership from our administration and from our school board because we appoint members to the shack. So those of us who have been actively involved in making sure the shack membership is current are willing to check in with people and, and make sure that they're not going to fight against certain things that we've prioritized there's usually only a couple of key players who actually feel comfortable talking about the issues and advocating for them specifically. And so if you're a district in the process of transitioning from something you don't think works to an evidence-based program, I think it's critical that A, you have at least one person on the board that's willing to ask the questions and push the issue. And then also ensuring that there are people in the decision-making body, which for us is the shack that recommends appropriate policy and programming to the board that will also advocate. Because I think we still live in cultures, even when we know it's the right thing to do, that people would rather not actually talk about all the details or the decisions you're making. And what we've found is that contrary to what one might fear, that if you talk about it, you're gonna attract negativity or people that push back against you. I think people just are appreciative and have been supportive of decisions that have been recommended to us and that we in turn have um, approved for the district to put in place. To me, 
The first key thing is that you have a champion that's comfortable discussing and advocating for this kind of thing and that knows it well enough that they can answer questions as they arise and they're also willing to continue to march forward instead of backing off. A lot of times controversy is less real and happening in real time than it is fear of potential controversy. And what I've learned is if you address these issues that are potentially controversial in a very straightforward manner, you have information readily available for people who have questions, you're able to rebut any myths that come up quickly and to have an external resource that can help you as well in answering those questions, an expert, someone who can also give data about the reality for kids who don't get this information and just being pretty frank and upfront and not stopping your march forward just because you're afraid something negative is going to occur.